this is just getting ridiculous here. Like, this is honestly ridiculous. The Everett Elks are out of players once again. It's all zero overalls here. How are we going to rebuild this team? we got to make them Stanley Cup champions once again. Well, we're going to be doing that, and we're doing it through the wheel of CHL teams. So we're going to be using CHL alumni players in order to draft our team today. So whatever team we land on, we only can select NHL players from that team. Robert Thomas, welcome to the team. I know for a fact you played for the London Knights at one point. I'm not even looking at all the players who have played for the London Knights, Robert Thomas is the first selection. But for example, here's some players that we could select. We could take Patrick Kane, John Tavares, Corey Perry, John Carlson, Nazem Kadri, Mitch Marner, Matthew Kachuk, but I know at one point Robert Thomas did play for this team, so that's who we're going to be selecting. Yes, we are taking Robert Thomas over Matthew Kachuk. Is that a very stupid decision? Absolutely. Now, if I were to select Robert Thomas over Matthew Kachuk, that would be some crazy glazing. Matthew Kachuk's a 93 overall. We're bringing him to the team here. It's a no-brainer. So Matthew Kachuk, you're going to be the first player to be joining the Everett Elks here. 93 overall. Are you going to be able to pick up one shot this season? That's the real question. Also, does he really have high franchise potential? Didn't realize that. Well, the season simulates here and we lose absolutely every single game. Are you part of the 80% of people watching this video right now that aren't subscribed to the channel? Like, what are you doing? Come on, you gotta subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 65k by the end of the month. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. So season number one is going as expected. We got through 27 games and then the game froze. So yep, we gotta spin the wheel once again. So I think I figured out why the game always freezes. We're allowing too many goals. It gets to the point where we just break the game because we allow so many. The St. John Sea Dogs are gonna be the next team we're selecting from. I could not tell you which NHL players have played for them. Now I'm gonna be completely honest. There are teams that I'm much more familiar with. The Erie Otters, the London Knights, a lot of the WHL teams. I have an idea of which NHL players have come from those franchises. However, when it comes to players from the Quebec League, more than likely, I'm not gonna know which players have come from those franchises. However, we do have some great options here. We got Jonathan Huberto, we got Mike Hoffman, Charlie Coyle, Thomas Shabbat, and more than likely, I think Thomas Shabbat's going to be the guy we go with here. I believe out of all these players right here, he's the highest overall, and he's going to be a great start to building our defense. So Thomas Shabbat, you're going to be the first defense we bring to the team here. You're an 87 overall offensive defenseman. You're going to produce a bit of offense from the defense. That's what I like to see. However, Thomas Shabbat's not going to be providing offense for the defense quite yet. He's actually going to be our number one line center. Yes, this is what the head coach preferred lines are. They they want Thomas Shabbat playing number one center minutes. I have absolutely no clue what the coach is cooking up here. But you know what? We got to let this man cook. So the Everett Elks made it through a season. Like we can celebrate that. Yeah, we only scored four goals the entire season, but we made it to the end of the season. So there is that. So Matthew Kachuk is going to lead the way here. He had four goals. Thomas Shabbat picked up four assists. But the real question is, what did the faceoff numbers look like for Thomas Shabbat? Somehow this man had a 45 win percentage. His win percentage when it came to faceoffs, 44.9%. He won 761 face-offs. 55 rating, by the way. Yeah, so that's a whole lot of nonsense, winning 45% of your face-offs with a 55 rating. Like, that makes no sense. Dallas has beaten Detroit when it comes to the Stanley Cup final. You know what? We're just moving on from this. This season was utter nonsense. So we picked up a great player with our last spin. Hopefully that continues with this next one. What team are we going to be landing on? The Prince George Cougars. Now, I said I was familiar with WHL teams. Not too familiar with NHL players that have come from the Cougars. All right, so I'm going to keep it a buck 50 here. Did not realize that Zdeno Chara played for the Prince George Cougars. Did not realize Dustin Bufflin played for the Prince George Cougars. I also didn't realize that Andre Vasilevsky played for the Prince George Cougars. So yeah, that's who we're adding to the team here, Andre Vasilevsky. All right, so Stick on the Ice was very curious about the fact that Andre Vasilevsky played for the Prince George Cougars. Started doing some research. There's a guy named Alex Vasilevsky that played for the Prince George Cougars. I think it's just a mistake on hockey reference because Alex Vasilevsky played for the Prince George Cougars. Andre Vasilevsky certainly didn't. Yeah, because Andre Vasilevsky definitely didn't play in the WHL, definitely didn't play in the CHL. He played in the AHL and he played in the KHL, but he didn't play in the CHL. So we went to the store think we were getting Andre Vasilevsky. We're actually getting Jensen Harkins. He's the only active player on this list. So I have absolutely no clue what to expect from Harkins here when it comes to overall. It's probably not going to be that high. You know what? I'll take a 78 overall. That is way higher than I was expecting. I was thinking you're going to be like a 73 overall. Being completely honest, I haven't heard of you up until this point, but you know what? Jansen Harkins, welcome to the team and you're going to play some big minutes for us. 
So Harkins is going to become our new number one line center. And then we're going to send Thomas Shabbat back to the defense where he belongs. He's going to be our number one defenseman there. So once again, we're going to see the Everett Elks dead last in the entire league with an 0-82 record. But we did score 11 goals this season. So the team's slowly improving. Now, the only surprise to me is the top guys on this team really didn't perform. I mean, Matthew Kuchuk had all 11 points. So no surprise there. But Harkins, he only had nine and Thomas Shabbat only seven. I was expecting our top three guys here to have minimum 10 points each. Meanwhile, our goaltenders are putting up numbers like that in case you were wondering. When the season came to an end, we're going to see the Red Wings making the Stanley Cup Final once again here, but this time they're actually going to be winning it, taking down the Oilers in a six-game series. So Prince George didn't really help us too much, but is this next team going to be helping us a bit more? It looks like they will be the Sudbury Wolves. Now, unfortunately, this team's not going to be helping as much as I thought they were. Nick and Marcus Foligno are both available here. Mark Stahl is available, but you know what? I think we're going to pass up on all these guys right here. We're actually going to pick up a goaltender, and when it comes to a goaltender, it's not going to be Mike Smith, but we will go with Yuko Pekalukkanen. Although we He's only like an 83 84 overall that's good enough for us to win a stanley cup so yuko pekalukunen welcome to the team like to be fair once we get to the end of this video and we've constructed an entire roster we don't need some 99 overall goaltender in order for us to win we just need an 83 overall like yuko pekalukunen he usually puts up good numbers in simulations so i'm not too concerned about his production and of course we all understand how valuable goaltenders are we're up to a six overall here so yuko pekalukunen you got a great core in front of you three nhl players yeah, I'm expecting very little from you this season. So we added a goaltender in Yuko Pekka and Clearly, that can't make our team worse. We scored eight goals this season, three less than last season. Granted, the defense was way better. We only allowed 587 goals, which is way less than last season. But still, we only scored eight goals this season. So I really don't need to look at the offense production from these guys right here. But you know what? I will check on the goaltending because I'm kind of curious what Yuko Pekka did. He had a 905 and a 583. Considering he faced 4,500 shots, these aren't too bad. But you know what? We're still one of the worst teams in the entire league. The New York Rangers are winning a Stanley Cup here. We got to keep on improving this team. Team, so that means we gotta spin the wheel again so i need like the eerie otters or something give me Connor mcdavid just give me a superstar player yeah that's not what i was looking for we gotta spin this wheel again there's no active players left on the prince george cougars probably should remove them from the wheel that wouldn't be a bad decision here Okay, we got the St. John's Sea Dogs again. How is this happening? So you know what? Stick on the Ice is making an executive decision here. I'm removing all duplicates. The fact that we landed on the St. John's Sea Dogs again, and we landed on the Prince George Cougars, I'm not doing this nonsense where we just seem to land on the exact same teams, considering there is all of these options. We have all of these options right here, and we're landing on duplicates this early in the video. So all of the duplicates have been removed, and now we're going to be getting a new team. Yeah, that was actually ridiculous. The fact that we got two repeats that early it looks like this next player is going to be selected from the peats now unfortunately the peats aren't going to be giving us any superstar players eric stall would have been great in his prime unfortunately he's not in his prime anymore jordan stall would have been fantastic in his prime but he's not in his prime anymore and then when we get further down zach bogosian zach cassian nick ritchie ryan spooner so you know what based on the options available here we're going with mason mctavish bro's like an 85 86 overall right now that's gonna be a nice addition to the team so at first i didn't think we were gonna be getting a great player but you know what i'll definitely take an 85 overall mason mctavish he's gonna be a nice addition to the team here by the time we get to the end though he's probably gonna drop down to a third line guy but for now an 85 overall what can i complain about there so we officially have ourselves one forward line which is gonna be mason mctavish harkins and matthew kachuk and then when it comes to the defense we're still one defenseman away from a complete lineup well one complete lineup i should say one forward line one defensive line and a goaltender all right so that was a pretty quick season for the boys nhl 24 crashed it didn't freeze but it actually crashed this time so yeah we gotta spin the wheel again so mason mctavish didn't really get to show off what he could bring to the team because we only got through about two games but you know what we're gonna be adding some way to help him and it looks like we're adding somebody from the moose shaw warriors now, now the real question is, is it Braden Point or is it Morgan Riley? So as I mentioned, Braden Point, Morgan Riley, you're the top two selections here. And of course, we're going with Braden Point. So although Morgan Riley would complete one lineup for the boys, we got to do something like this. Braden Point, you got to come to the team. Braden Point, Matthew Kuchuk, Mason McTavish on that first line. Yeah, we're looking pretty good right now. The defense is weak. But that's going to get better over time. Now I'm not necessarily expecting this team to see a lot of success here. Mason McTavish, Braden Point, Matthew Kuchuk. But I am expecting you guys to score some goals this season. I 
I want to see when you guys record at least 20 points. Okay, hold on here. We've won two games this season. We beat the Washington Capitals in a shootout here. And then who else do we beat? We had to have beat some other team. Well, of course we beat some other team. We have two wins. What was the other team we beat? The Colorado Avalanche. Yuko Pekalukinen picked up a shutout against the Colorado Avalanche in the second game of the season. We've won two games. We have four forwards, one defenseman, and a goalie. We have a 240 and 0 record. Ain't no way this is actually happening. Okay, what is this team on? We beat the Columbus Blue Jackets 2-0 in regulation. This team won a game in regulation. Nah, Columbus, you have to abandon your franchise. Losing in a shootout is one thing. We beat the Colorado Avalanche in a shootout. We beat the Washington Capitals in a shootout. But you guys lost to us in regulation. You couldn't score a goal in regulation. I mean, granted, the Colorado Avalanche didn't either. But they lost in a shootout. Anything can happen in a shootout. But you lost to us 2 nothing in regulation. Ain't no way. So when the season came to an end, we had a 378 and one record. We won one game in regulation, which was a shutout. I still can't believe that happened. It makes no sense. Brain point, 51 points here. Matthew Kachuk, 49. Mason McTavish, 45. The boys were performing this season. That's all I can say. We were looking great. And Yuko Pekalukinen, three wins, two shouts, a 903 and a 551. I had a couple questions about bringing you onto the team earlier, but you know what? You've lived up to the hype. Two shutouts in season what? Number five, number six, that makes no sense. You're him. But two shutouts and three wins doesn't win us a Stanley Cup. The Minnesota Wild are winning one. We have to keep on getting better if we want to compete with the best in the league. And one player that would certainly help us compete with the best in the league, Connor McDavid. So can we land on the Erie Otters here? The Oshawa Generals, we're still going to be walking away with a good player. So John Tavares, you played a majority of your junior career with the Oshawa Generals before going over to the London Knights. And since you played for Oshawa, that means we can add you to our team. So that's going to be another amazing player added today. So John Tavares, you haven't really seen too much success with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, you did pick up that one big goal that sent you guys to the second round. And then you won one game in the second round. We're not going to talk about what happened this season, losing to the Boston Bruins in game seven. But you know what? You're on the Everett Elks now. This team sees success over time. Eventually, we always win. Now, of course, John Tavares is going to be getting first line minutes on our team right now. It's going to be you, Brain Point, Matthew Kachuk on that top line. Harkins and Mason McTavish are going to hold down the second as well as the zero overall player. When it comes to the defense, though, it's still only Thomas Shabbat. That will improve over time. Eventually, we have to add some defensemen. So you might be able to take John Tavares off the Toronto Maple Leafs, but you can't take the Toronto Maple Leafs out of John Tavares. We went 0-82, significantly worse from last season. I mean, granted, the forward numbers were still pretty good here. Matthew Kachuk, 52, Brain point 45 John Tavares had 37 points but the goaltending I'm assuming took a massive step back Yuko Pekka Lukinen an 899 that's just not what we need here granted I think last season was a fluke you picked up two shutouts that's not happening with basically a zero overall team when the playoffs came to a close the Tampa Bay Lightning are going to be taking home the Stanley Cup in a five game series after defeating the Philadelphia Flyers in the conference finals yeah the Philadelphia Flyers made it to the conference finals who would have thought so we've gotten back to back amazing selections here can we make it three in a row and ideally bring in a superstar defense here we're going over to this team yeah i'm not even going to try to pronounce that let alone if i know a single player from this team so if i interpreted google translate correctly we landed on the saguenayons probably didn't pronounce that right but it doesn't really matter there are some decent options here john gabriel pajot we got nick waugh dawson mercer go down a bit further you know we got we got players um yeah but what we really could use here is probably a defenseman uh, when it comes to goaltending, there's no goaltenders available. Thought I'd just check though. Yeah, we could really use the defenseman here, but I don't think we're going to be seeing that here. I think we're just going to go with Dawson Mercer. I think he'd be the highest overall out of all these players. Maybe Nick Waugh. Whoever's the highest overall, I guess, is who we'll go with. So Dawson Mercer, what overall are you? I believe you're around an 83 overall. That's exactly what you are. So we have 83 overall Dawson Mercer. When we go over to the Islanders, what's John Gabriel Pajot? Pajot's an 83 as well. And if I remember correctly, Nick Waugh's an 82 overall, but he might be an 83 as well. Where's Nick Waugh here? We got to keep on scrolling down. Yeah, he's an 82 overall. Okay, the fact that I know what Nick Waugh's overall is before I even have to look at it tells you I've played way too many hours of this game. Like knowing Austin Matt, Matthews or Connor McDavid's overall, that's a bit more common, you know, they're superstar players. I know Nick Waz. Yeah, I've put way too many hours into this game, but you know what? We need some scoring for the bottom six. But then again, Dawson Mercer, last time I added you to one of my teams, especially the Everett Elks team, you did not perform. So we're actually going to pass up on you and John Gabriel Pajot, we're bringing you to the team. I still haven't forgiven Dawson Mercer to what he did to the Everett Elks last time he was here. So no matter what happens, as long as I can bring in a defenseman with the next selection, that's what we're going to be doing. Unless it's the Erie Otters and I can get Connor McDavid, then I'm selecting Connor McDavid. But outside the Erie Otters, we're bringing a defenseman to the team. 
team. Not too much is changing here with the Everett Elks this season. A 278 and 2 record, but this might be one of our better seasons because we did have two regulation wins. On top of two regulation wins, we were over a goal per game here, and Brain Point, he's going to lead the way. 60 points. Matthew Kachuk is picking up 50. Meanwhile, John Gabriel Pajot, only a 20 point season from him. But those numbers don't really matter too much. The Winnipeg Jets are winning a Stanley Cup here, defeating the Carolina Hurricanes in five games. Now it's time for us to add defensemen to the team. Let's find out who it's going to be. Now, there's a lot of great options out there. If we land on an OHL team, then we're going to maximize our options. It looks like we're going to be landing on the Huskies. Couldn't tell you which NHL players have come from the Huskies. To be fair, couldn't name you a single player on the Huskies right now. Now, stick on the ice. Massive wire. We could bring Jeremy Lazon to the team. We could bring Myers to the team. Those are two defensemen. You know what? I said I was going to bring a defenseman to the team. Yeah, plans changed once I realized Nikita Kucherov was an option. Yeah, he's coming to the team. So how about I make the defenseman rule a bit like this? I'll bring a defenseman to the team when a superstar player isn't available. I'm not passing up on 96 Nikita Kucherov for an 83 overall defenseman. All right, so we got ourselves a big three here in Matthew Kachuk, Braden Point, Nikita Kucherov. All we need to do is bring Steven Stamkos to the team and we're going to be looking like the Tampa Bay Lightning. However, the Tampa Bay Lightning have seen a lot of success, so I mean, that could be the move. So it's going to be a similar result for the Everett Elks once again, a three-win season for the team. We got to improve the defense if we really want to see some success. Brain Point is picking up 65 this year. Kuchov's picking up 64, Matthew Kachuk 53, the offense is doing really good, I have no issues with that, Yuko Pekalukinen, you had 3 wins this season, but an 899, still not going to cut it here, then again, I also haven't put a defense in front of you, so that's on me. Meanwhile, not only are the Buffalo Sabres making the playoffs, they're going on some ridiculous run here, and they're hoisting a Stanley Cup over the Winnipeg Jets. So Buffalo, you finally got yourselves a Stanley Cup, congrats. But you know what, I've done enough talking about defensemen, and potentially bringing defensemen to the team, it's time that we actually do that, and bring an elite defenseman to the team we got the Lethbridge Hurricanes now the Lethbridge Hurricanes did produce an amazing defenseman in Brett Seabrook but unfortunately we're not bringing him to the team here Kalen Addison is a defenseman we could bring from San Jose I mean that might be the move here however if we do go further down we could bring Stuart Skinner on to be one of our goaltenders then we have our goaltending tandem set do I want to take Stuart Skinner or do I want to wait for another goaltender? Okay, so I'm going to mention this right now because I just realized it, but I haven't been using the most updated roster. I've been using the second newest roster. So I went ahead and merged my created roster with the newest roster. So now all the overalls that players are showing are the most updated. And the only reason I realized that I wasn't on the newest roster is because Stuart Skinner was sitting at like an 83 overall and I knew for a fact he was higher than an 83 overall. So yeah, if any of the overalls changed on my team, that's why is because I just updated the roster. Stuart Skinner, welcome to the team, 85 overall goaltender, so that means we're rocking an 85 and an 84. So with the addition of Stuart Skinner, we have our defensive tandem locked. It's going to be Skinner and Yuko Pekalukunin for the rest of this video. These are two goaltenders that we can win with for sure. Okay, what am I looking at here? Jeremy Swayman straight up for Michael Matheson. That is not a deal you should be doing. I mean, Montreal, you got an absolute steal here, but I am not trading Jeremy Swayman straight up for Michael Matheson. That's just not the move. So with two goaltenders, you would expect we'd see a lot more success this season. Not really, we're still only winning three games. Like the offense for this team is great once again. Kucherov 72 points, Kachuk 63. The negative plus minuses are below 100, so I'm definitely gonna take that. But the goaltending numbers from these two guys right here, not what I was expecting. I thought we were gonna get better numbers here. Stuart Skinner, only one win. Yuko Pekaluk, and he's picking up two the save percentages aren't bad but i just thought we would see more wins this season but at the end of the day i continue to fail the goaltenders here stick on the ice maybe bring in a defenseman to help them and that could potentially happen with this next spin as long as we don't land on the eerie otters it looks like we're going to be landing on the phoenix the Sherbrooke Phoenix. Yeah, so about bringing defensemen to the team here, we're just going to be selecting Oliver considering he's the highest overall here and he's the only one that's played a significant amount of NHL games. So Oliver's definitely going to be bringing some physicality to the team and that's about always bringing to the team. Not the greatest playmaker, doesn't really have good offensive awareness, not the best shooter in the world, can't really play defense, he's an okay skater, but he's physical. So you can do that. All right, so at this point, I'm fully convinced we're going to have an entire forward core before we even get two defensemen on this team. We have four more spots to fill in the forward core. Meanwhile, the defense, we still have five spots to fill out here. So have I built a balanced team? Absolutely not. Is that impacting our success? Probably not. We still have zero overall players. I don't think it really matters where they play. So I don't know how Vegas has enough money, but Severson and Cabranson are both going to be brought in here. That's about $10 million being brought onto the Vegas Golden Knights. Didn't realize they had $10 million in cap space available. So the Everett Elks continue to do their thing, and this is going to be the best season they've had yet, a five-win season. The offense is slowly getting better. We're up to 1.5 goals per game. However, the defense, 
yeah, I mean, are we really surprised it's bad? Like, I can't even complain about us being a bad defensive team when I don't bring defensemen onto the team. Oliver, I'm kind of curious to see what you did since showing the team. You had five points this season. Honestly, that seems about right. Meanwhile, Stuart Skinner, he's going to be picking up all five wins this season, and he had one shutout in the process. So we got to bring a defenseman onto this team. I've gone too many seasons without bringing a defenseman. I believe Thomas Shabbat was the second player we've added, and we haven't added a single defenseman since. That's going to change right now. Well, as long as we can select a defense, because the last team we picked from we couldn't even get a defenseman are we gonna be able to get a defenseman from this team right here maybe so not only are we getting a defenseman we're getting a pretty good one chris letang welcome to the team now there was another great option available like we could have went with brad marchant but you know what the defense needs help here and 87 overall chris letang i think you're gonna be a game changer for us you know what i don't think you will be i know you will be so we finally got our defense shaping up a little bit here thomas Schwan and chris letang are gonna be that first pairing from here on out as long as we can bring 80 overall players to the team we're gonna be in a good spot no nah, now this makes no sense john Tavares to vegas of all places because they can afford to take on an 11 million dollar cap hit now chris letang might be the most valuable player in the nhl a 12 67 and 3 record things are turning around for the boys all we needed was one more defenseman and now we can take over the league the defense might not have been the greatest in the world but you know what it's a work in progress chris letang you meant quite a bit to this team right here the goaltending numbers for Stuart skinner absolutely amazing we're not going to talk about yuko pekalukinen though this ain't it i mean i'm really gassing up Stuart skinner when he had a goals against of almost a 450 but you know what we only have one defensive pairing right now it's a work in progress shout out to the carolina hurricanes stanley cup champs so it's time for us to add another defenseman to the team we get a couple more defensemen here we might be looking at a 35 win team we've got the kitchener rangers i know for a fact they're going to be giving us another defenseman so the original plan was to add a defenseman to the team but jeff skinner's available nazim codger's available landis cog's available mike hoffman's available but the one thing you might notice not a lot of defensemen here like there is zero defensemen available from the kitchener rangers we could get robert bortuzzo i mean that's not the worst selection in the world but you know what i think we're gonna pick up another forward here and i think that's gonna be gabriel landis cog or jeff skinner whoever's the highest overall i think it might be jeff skinner like i just don't recall how much gabriel landis cogs overall has dropped since he's been injured for some reason i don't think they've dropped it yeah he's still an 88 overall i believe that jeff skinner is only an 87 so we're just gonna double check that jeff skinner is actually an 86 overall so yeah that means gabriel landis cog is gonna be joining the team here a nice 88 overall power forward so the additional landis cog is making our forward core look absolutely incredible here the bottom six still needs a bit of work i mean our fourth line is consisting of zero overall players our second and third defense pairings also looking weak here but you know what that means we're only seven players away from hoisting a stanley cup so michael matheson might just go down as one of the most valuable players in the league here he's now got traded for linus allmark he got traded for jeremy swayman earlier now for allmark so at this point i don't think it really matters who we add to our forward core we're not going to be a better team until we get better defensively plain and simple however when guys like gabriel linus cog are available i'm going to be selecting them there's no question about that we were just below two goals per game and with the offense looking like this i'm not overly surprised granted outside of our first line the team wasn't that great like Tavares only had 38 points landis cog 36 chris letang 36 so yeah the defense definitely needs to get a lot better meanwhile the goaltending Stuart skinner you had a 904 i can't complain about that lukanen you had an 882 i can complain about that that's awful like i really believed in you being the goaltender for us and you have not lived up to the hype thank god i got Stuart skinner the winnipeg jets are going to be taking the new jersey Devils down a seven game series but we got to bring another elite defenseman onto this team and that's what we're hoping to do with this next spin so who's going to be joining the team next we gotta get some ohl teams the ohl is always producing some great prospects the Kelowna rockets though that might not be too bad okay at this point why do you have to keep giving me elite players leon dry saddles who we're going to be selecting here but man we got to start bringing some defensemen onto this team but i can't turn down leon dry that's just not possible like absolutely everybody knows that i should be picking up defensemen here but come on it's a leon Leon Dreisaitl. Y'all would get mad at me if I turned this guy down. 94 overall Leon Dreisaitl. He's a franchise player, an elite goal scorer. I just can't turn him down. He's got to come to the team. So I don't think we need to spend too much time talking about this season. We already know for a fact that we're going to struggle since we don't have any defensemen here. Now I'm very serious when I say we're not spending a lot of time here. The Everett Elks, 12, 67, and 3. Kucherov, 69 points. The Islanders, Stanley Cup champions. Let's spin that wheel. Like I'm not wasting my time here. We didn't get defensemen. Clearly, we're not going to be a good team. Red Deer please give me a good defenseman and not some other superstar player that I want to select. Now there's a handful of good players available here. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Jake DeBrusque, Matt Dumba, 
Brandon Hagel, but you know what? One of those guys I listed is a defenseman, Matthew Dumba, welcome to the team. So unfortunately, we are passing on some high overall players like Hagel we could have selected. He's an 86 overall, but you know what? 83 overall, Matt Dumba, he helps the defense. Anything's going to help this team when it comes to defense. So we're three defensemen away from completing our defensive core here. And once we're able to do that, then we'll definitely be able to compete for a Stanley Cup. Yeah, so you remember that time that Michael Matheson got traded for Jeremy Swayman? Well, it happened again, but this time they also got low ride in the deal. I don't even know how that happens. Meanwhile, I guess Winnipeg's picking up John Tavares because that happened. Now, it was a huge season for the team. We had our first 20 win campaign, a 20, 56 and 6 record. But on top of that, we also had our first point of game player. And I don't think it's much of a surprise who's going to be picking up a point of game here. It's Nikita Kucherov, 86 points, 45 goals, 41 helpers. But Drysdale was only one point shy of picking up a point in the game. So you know what? We got the scoring going on this team. The goaltending looking a lot better here. However, Stuart Skinner, an 897, that's not going to cut it. Yuko Pekka Lukanen, on the other hand, I'll definitely take a 924. So we saw how much of an impact Matt Matt Dumba brought to the team, how much of an impact is our next defenseman going to be? So let's spin the wheel of CHL teams here and see what we're going to be bringing to the team. It looks like we're off to North Bay. Not really too sure which NHL defenseman came from this team. Now looking at who's available from North Bay here, unfortunately there only is one defenseman and I think I'd just rather go with Barkley Goudreau. He's like an 81 overall player. He can play some bottom six minutes for us. But this defenseman right here, he's probably only like a 72 overall and I think I'd rather have an 80 overall forward than a 72 overall defenseman. Cam's also not playing played this season he's only played in 34 career games so yeah we're going with Barkley Goudreau now Barkley Goudreau you might not be a defenseman but you can help the forward core here play some bottom six minutes play some good defense that's why we're bringing you to this team right here I mean you're also the best option available that's the other reason so we're four players away from completing this team we have one zero overall in the forward core that being Jordan NHL who's a left defenseman and then we have three zero overalls in the defensive core one left defenseman a left winger and a centerman yeah I don't know why they're out of position but we're not going to worry about that a zero overall is a zero overall so when you add defensemen to the team you get better when you add forwards you get worse we actually won less games this season only 17 not really too sure how that works like seriously like i understand that this team needs defensemen desperately but how does adding barkley goudreau to the team make us worse because by every metric it should make us better we replace a zero overall player with barkley goudreau and this is what happened here maybe the goaltending numbers weren't quite as good yoko pekka Luknin, you didn't have a 924 or 925 whatever you had last season i guess that makes the difference but you know what we're just going to keep on rebuilding this team shout out to the edmonton oilers they're stanley cup champions but we're only a couple defensemen away notice how i didn't say players a couple of defensemen we need defensemen so i don't care what team we get here as long as we can add defensemen you're not doing this to me okay unfortunately we're not bringing a defenseman to the team it has to be Connor mcdavid like that's the only player i can select here i am not turning down Connor mcdavid so here's our choices Connor mcdavid ryan o'reilly alex to burakovsky dylan strome anthony sorelli like a ton of great players we could pick up adam pelic for the defense he would actually be incredible eric chernak would be great do i turn down Connor mcdavid because we can win a stanley cup without Connor mcdavid we desperately need defensemen though i'm gonna make the wrong decision aren't i okay hear me out we have one forward spot remaining we have three defensive spots it's gonna be very difficult to get a better defenseman than adam pellick he's an 88 overall he's got superstar x factors he's the whole package right here do i select him instead of Connor mcdavid like we are talking Connor mcdavid 97 overall Connor mcdavid best player in the game Connor mcdavid but i'm going with adam pellick i am making this decision so with the addition of adam pellick it's gonna be pellick chris letang matt dumba Tom Thomas Shabbat. The defensive core is looking better here, but our forward core could have looked a lot better. Imagine Connor McDavid here. Connor McDavid, Dry Saddle, Matthew Kachuk, Braden Point, Kucherov, Landis Cog. That would just be unstoppable. But instead, we took Adam Pellick. I'm going to have to live with that decision. So, did the Everett Elks do the impossible? Are we no longer dead last in the entire league? We're still dead last here, but only by four points, a 29 45 and 8 record. I guarantee you, if we picked up Connor McDavid, we wouldn't have a record like this. So, on top of us seeing a ton of success this season, Dry Saddle 102, Kucherov 102, Matthew Kuchuk 85. Everyone on that first line has a positive plus minus here. And even Thomas Shabbat plus 14. The team's starting to step it up here, and we're going to be winning a Stanley Cup within three years. I'm calling it right now. Stuart Skinner, I need a better save percentage. Other than that, I'm perfectly fine with the numbers you're putting up. I mean, the goals against isn't good either, but that's because we have zero overalls on the team still. So I think if we add one more defenseman to this team, we actually might be able to make it into the playoffs. Vancouver's taking down the Toronto Maple Leafs, but that defenseman has to be a good defense we can't be bringing no 70 overall to the team we need a 75 overall defenseman and then we'll be making a postseason push so we have a chance at making the playoffs here who are we going to be bringing to the team we got to get a great defenseman the Brantford Bulldogs who is that 
Yeah, that's the nicest way I can say it. Who is that? All right, so this selection is going to be a bit confusing. Technically, the Bramford Bulldogs are also the Hamilton Bulldogs. However, this list right here, I know for a fact isn't accurate because Robert Thomas played for the Hamilton Bulldogs at one point. I know Connor McMichael played for the Hamilton Bulldogs at one point. So there's a lot of players missing on this list. But Wi-Fi did play for this team. Wi-Fi is also a defenseman. He's the guy we're going to bring to the team here. We're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. So Wi-Fi might not be a superstar defenseman, but he's a 79 overall defensive defenseman. He can play some minutes for this team on the third pairing. You know what? He's better than a zero overall, so I'll take it. But in saying that, I've also passed upon Robert Thomas twice in this video now. Do we change that? I think we might have to change that. Wi-Fi, you might not be coming to the team here. If you've made this far in the video, you have to leave a like. I have passed upon Robert Thomas not once, but twice now. Stick on the ice, passed upon Robert Thomas. Never thought I'd see the day. So over the past couple years we've made some massive strides improving the team we're down to one zero overall player on our defensive core one zero overall player on our forward core i think we still might be able to make the playoffs even though we're lacking those two departments now folks it's a great day here we're not last in the entire league anymore 28th with a 37 40 and 5 record we're just a couple games away from the playoffs so one more defenseman's definitely getting us into the postseason here dry style 102 points kucherov 93 matthew kuchuk's only picking up 80 here so a bit of a slower season from him while the gold tank numbers both of these guys were pretty solid in between the pipes but one more player is definitely going to be the difference maker for us so colorado more than likely this is the last stanley cup you're going to be winning the everett elks are about to make it into the postseason and the rest of the league better watch out now this could potentially be our final spin here we're going to go on some massive run after this one the final player we're going to be picking up is coming from bathurst so it turns out that waiting all this time was definitely worth it the final piece to our defense noah dobson this is the perfect piece to end on so this is exactly what we've been missing a final defenseman for the team here and it turns out to be 89 overall noah dobson one of the best young defensemen in the league right now this is the perfect final piece for us we're winning a stanley cup so this is where our defense is going to be looking like entering the postseason noah dobson adam pellick thomas spot chris letang matt dumba and wi-fi this is definitely a defense you can live with when it comes to the forward core we can win with these guys no question about it yeah we got one zero overall here but that doesn't matter we're still going to be seeing success so it's taken many spins to get to this point but it's now time for us to compete in the playoffs let's go on to run here so i'm happy to say it's finally happened the everett elks are in the postseason here fifth in the entire league with a 47 29 and 6 record we're ready to show the league what we're about so all it took was noah dobson for this team to completely turn it around kucherov 88 points dry 88 matthew kachuk 85 brain points 78 the offense is great across the board here we have no weak spots and when it comes to the goaltending that might be a weak spot both these guys had goals against of three that's not ideal but if stuart skinner can turn it around the postseason i'm not too worried about his regular season numbers we got the sale cracking in the first round here it's time for the boys to make a statement now through the first two games things were looking great i didn't think the seattle kraken could even compete with us then we dropped the next two after that are we gonna be dropping three straight here yes we are hopefully it's not four straight games okay we're eliminated in the first round not ideal so i really need to know what happened in that first round matchup kucherov 11 points matthew kuchuk 10 points leon drysdale 10 when you see numbers like this you're going to assume that they got through the first round nope we didn't and somehow these numbers didn't get us through the first round a 9 12 and a 286 i was about to rip into stewart skinner and be like you know what the reason that we didn't succeed is because this man played terrible he had a 286 that's not even that bad to cap off the postseason i guess the seattle kraken were actually very good they made it all the way to the stanley cup final but lost to the tampa bay lightning in a seven game series so seattle was legit i'll give it to them but we're about to prove that our team's legit one more forward then we've completed the forward core here we're gonna finish off with the spokane chiefs and and when it comes to our last selection here who are we going to be going with well we could have went with jared spurgeon he would have been a great defenseman for us but you know what we don't have to fill out the defensive core anymore so tyler johnson you're going to be the guy we go with here so to finish out the forward core tyler johnson is going to be the last piece here but i do want to mention we could have had Connor mcdavid we could have had robert thomas but instead we got tyler johnson so yeah tyler johnson welcome to the team i guess so it looks like the team's complete here dry style kucherov matthew kachuk on the first line gabriel landscog brain point john Tavares on the second pajot mason mctavish barkley goudreau on the third line then harkins tyler johnson oliver are gonna be on the fourth line when it comes to the defense we got pelican dobson chris letang shabbat and then wi-fi and matt damba and to cap it all off we got two decent goaltenders that can hold it down for now stuart skinner and yuko pekalukin 
Lehkonen. With a team like this, I'm hoping we see success in the playoffs pretty soon. So the Everett Elks are near the top of the league, second with a 50-23-9 record. The only team better than us right now, the Colorado Avalanche, but that's going to change pretty soon. The forward core is looking fantastic. Three guys over a point a game, and Braden Point, he was only three points shy of a point a game. When it comes to the goaltending, is that looking better this season? Sort of. I mean, Stuart Skinner is a bit of a disappointment still. The goals against is still above three, but Yuko Pekka Lukanen, he held it down at 918 to 234. Keep doing your thing. Well, I mean, you can't really keep doing your thing because you've got Stuart Skinner as the starter. You're going to be the backup here. We're in the postseason. Yuko Pekka Lukanen is probably not going to see a lot of minutes. We've got our first round matchup, and that's going to be against the Nashville Predators. In the last series we were a part of, we won the first two games, but lost four straight after that. In this series, we lost the first two games, won two straight after that. We're looking to win four straight games here. I'm simulating game five and game six, and we're going to watch us take this one home. We're off to the second round just like that. So we've gone ahead and moved on to the second round. It's time for us to get our revenge against the Seattle Kraken. And I was looking forward to taking on the Colorado Avalanche in the conference finals, but that's not going to be happening because the Winnipeg Jets are going to be sweeping them. So it turns out the Seattle Kraken are actually a bunch of frauds after we upgraded our team. We're taking them down in a sweep. Now, Minnesota, I was hoping I would take you on in the conference finals. You swept the Colorado Avalanche, so I thought you were legit, but never mind. You're going to be falling in the second round to the Minnesota Wild. And Minnesota, you've made it to this point. You beat some great teams so far, so I think you guys are legit. So it's been sheer domination against the Minnesota Wild so far. We got ourselves a 3-1 series lead. We're looking to win game five, but that's not going to happen. So we got to win game six here. Okay, we're not blowing a 3-1 series lead. I was planning on beating Minnesota and then moving right on to the final. But that's not happening here. We have to go to game seven first. So here we go. Game seven, the Everett Elks taking on the Minnesota Wild. We're both picking up goals in the first period here, but we're going to double down the second. We got this one in the bag as long as we don't choke here. Yeah, it's a tough one. Shout out to John Tavares, though. There's no reason we should be going to overtime right now. And in overtime, we're still going to lose this one. Okay, that's tough. That's real tough. So we were Stanley Cup bound, and then we proceeded to blow a 3-1 series lead. Matthew Kachuk, 19 points here. Leon Draisaitl, 18. Kucherov's picking up 17. The goaltending had to have been decent enough for us to make it to that point. Stuart Skinner had a 9-24 and a 2-35. This wasn't your fault, plain and simple. We have to continue to improve this team. Nah, like real talk, we should have just won a Stanley Cup there, but when push came to shove, this team just folded when they had to step up. We've got the Wenatchee Wild, also known as the Winnipeg Ice. That's who we're selecting from next. Okay, so how it's going to work here is because of the the Wenatchee Wild used to be the Winnipeg Ice, and the Winnipeg Ice used to be the Kootenay Ice. We're going to be using the Kootenay Ice alumni for this. It's just going to make it a lot easier. Sam Reinhart, you're going to be joining the team here. That's an amazing pickup for the team. Over the past couple of years, that team's relocated so many times. The Wenatchee Wild, then the Winnipeg Ice, then the Kootenay Ice. Yeah, it's been a long road for those guys, but Sam Reinhart, now you're going to be joining our team. It doesn't really matter what your junior alumni is, you're on the Everett Elks now, and that's all that matters. So we've had Sam Reinhart to the forward core. Obviously, we're going to be one of the better teams in the NHL. Like, look at our forward core. We have an 86 overall John Tavares on our third line, 85 overall Mason McTavish, and 83 overall John Gabriel Pajot. The top six is absolutely phenomenal. This team has no weaknesses other than the fourth line that could be improved slightly. All right, Sam Reinhart, you got some explain to do. How did you make us a 49 win team? We were a 50 win team last season. What happened to us? So Kucherov, you were great this season. Leon Draisaitl, you were great. Matthew Kachuk, you were great. Braden Point, how were you minus nine? Sam Reinhart, how were you minus 12? Landis Cog, how were you minus 13? What was going on with the second line? This should not be happening. All I'm saying is everyone has to step it up in the postseason. Stuart Skinner, you have to step it up. The second line needs to step up. Basically, everyone on this team needs to be better for the playoffs. We have the Nashville Predators in the first round once again. Let's get a nice warm up in against this team. So we won the first two games of this series, lost the next two, so you'd already know what that means we're gonna be losing the next four here and we're gonna be eliminated in the first round okay we won game number five but unfortunately we did drop game six so we have to go to game seven elimination so here we go game seven the everett elks taking on the nashville predators we have a 2-0 lead entering the third period normally i would say we have this locked down but we know what happened last time we had a lead entering the third period didn't really work for us but this one actually will be we're taking it three to one so we're moving on to the second round things aren't getting any easier it's actually going to be a lot harder we have Connor mcdavid and the edmonton oilers so we've been splitting games with the Edmonton Oilers. It's going back and forth. It's tied 2-2. Two to two. Game 5 is going to be a big one. Who's going to be showing up here? It looks like it's going to be the Edmonton Oilers. Everett, you got to win here. we got to make it to the conference finals here. We can't be folding every year. So here we go. Game 7, the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Everett Elks. We picked up three goals in the first period. I want to say we got this game. Yes, we do. We're taking it 3-1. to one. So that's back-to-back -back Game 7s we've shown up in, and now we're in the conference finals. But I don't care what happens in Game 7 of the first round. I don't care what happens in Game 7 of the second round. I care about the present, and that's going to be the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, so this right here, 
this ain't it. We're down 3-1 in the series against the Winnipeg Jets. We are going to be fighting back in game number five. Hopefully, we can continue to fight back in game number six. All right, we're off to game seven. We were down 3-1 in the series, but we're making the big comeback. So this team's won in game seven two times so far. Can we make it three here? Yes, we can. I'm simulating the rest of the game. We're not choking this one. We scored nine goals. Nine goals in game number seven when it mattered most. Yeah, we got this one in the bag. So it all comes down to this. One final matchup against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, we got this locked down. Toronto was not beating us in a seven game series. We swept them. We went to seven games against every single team. The Winnipeg Jets, seven games. The Edmonton Oilers, seven games. The Nashville Predators, seven games. The Toronto Maple Leafs, a four game sweep. Ain't no way. Like you have to admit, that's pretty funny. Going to seven games in the first, second and conference finals. And the second we get to the Stanley Cup final, completely smoke the Toronto Maple Leafs. Leafs. Nikita Kucherov, 10 goals, 19 assists, 29 points. Leon Dreisel was picking up 27. John Tavares, 22 points, including 14 goals. Kind of funny, he led the way for us. And when it comes to goaltending, Stuart Skinner was impeccable. 16 wins here, one shot, a 920 and a 257. I don't even know what to say here. Something about us beating the Toronto Maple Leafs in the Stanley Cup final in a sweep, it's just so fitting.